How's it going, ladies and Bruce? It's up, Bobby Six Killer. Welcome back to Clean Slate. I still don't know if those last couple of episodes were very long or very short or whatever, but we are going to jump into the allele eye genetics puzzle thing now. Let's do it. It's puzzle time. Wow, all right. That was a lot of info. I guess Lucian went all out with this one, huh? I think my head's down there. <laughs> yeah. He's all about genetics. But luckily for you, Mr. Alistair, so am I. I might not have a doctorate in genetics like he does, but I can do this much with my eyes closed. <laughs> hmm. No, I want to try to do it myself. Oh? Dude, our life is on the line. Let him do it. Are you sure? Yeah. It wouldn't be fair if I didn't at least try. I'd feel better if I let you do all the work. Alright, Mr. Alistair. Sounds good to me. I don't think Dr. Janice would be too happy if you did nothing, either. If you need any help, just ask, okay? Sure, I will. Thanks, Sam. Well, I'm obviously going to have to make cuts again. Let's see if I understand this correctly. Right now, I seem to have... To put input, only a genotype for the mother, and I need all children to have only brown, to have brown eyes. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I may have to obviously make cuts. Um. Did that work? I mean, that should work, right? Success. Ready for question two? But yeah, I'll have to make cuts as it takes longer and longer to figure these out. You know, because these, these, <laughs> these puzzles take me a long time. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Alright, so this time we need 50% brown. If we just chuck any amount of brown in, that should be enough. 25% green, 25% blue. Oh, what did the other parent have? Okay, so if I go... Something like that. Would that be about right? One big B should be enough to create 50% um, browns, because brown's dominant anyway. So as soon as that B infests anything, bam, brown. Uh, the green infests things faster, and the G is the little B blue is the least common, so we need more of them. Sure, ready for question three. Oh man, mother and father, what do we need? 50%, 50%, so we want no big Bs. We need no big Bs in here whatsoever. Obviously, big Bs are gonna make browns happen automatically just by having one. So if we do what we had last time, like BB, GG, and then uh, BB, big G, little G, like that, that should be right. It's the same as last time, except we took the big B out. Good, good. Ready for question four. Okay, this one could take a while. <laughs> Obviously, to get the brown again, we need one big B. Uh, the greens... So I'd probably go two GG and then... Uh, little BB, little GG, something like that. Because we need more greens. That's not right, is it? It's just going to give us 15%, 15, 25% of each. If we go BB, GG, little BB, big G, little G, like that, that'd be right. Okay, good. And all done. Okay, good. Is that enough? Is that everything? So. Is this thing stuck or... Sam? You seeing this? Oh, time's frozen again. Man. Sam? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I turn my head and see Sam completely frozen in place. This can only mean one thing. The man without a face. I pick up the computer chair with both hands. I'm gonna beat him with a computer chair. Leave me to fuck alone! And throw it across the room. The man without a face isn't hurt by it though. I mean, six bullets didn't do it, so a chair certainly isn't going to. He picks it back up with ease and snaps it against the counter. It looks just as horrifying as usual. One just does not get used to that sight. I managed to catch a glimpse of the clock on the door. It's stuck and won't go down anymore. 
stalking man without a face picks up a broken chair leg and charges at me. I quickly get out of the way, praying he doesn't wreck the computer behind me. Even if I survive this, the computer is destroyed. It's all over for me either way. After I barely manage to do dodge his tackle, I run and pick up something to defend myself. I end up taking the cushion off the chair and quickly rise it to block his swing. His weapon clashes against my improvised shield which barely manages to protect me. One stab at that metal chair leg and I'm done for. I fall down on the floor with the cushion raised above my head. As he prepares to swing again I... Oh man. Try to get out of the way. I roll out of the way and he strikes the wall, snapping his weapon in half. He tosses it aside and turns to me while I get back up on my feet. Even though he has no eyes, I can still feel it. He's like he's staring me down. If I could only run away, this would be so much easier, but I'm trapped in here with him. Think, Brendan, think! There has to be something in this room that can buy me time. I just have to look. Didn't Lucian leave something in these rooms that I can use right now? The anesthetic. That's right, Lucian left that syringe in the drawer. I run to the desk, shoving him in the process. I pull the top drawer open so hard it falls off the desk. Shit! The man without a face finally reacts and starts trudging towards me. I kneel down on the floor and start looking through the drawer, but he got to me faster than I expected. I turn around and he lifts me off the ground by my neck as I flail around like a fish out of the water. While I'm dangling from his left hand, he raises the right clenched in, clenched in a fist and dives it straight at my face. But it's not my face he hits. Instead, his fist impales itself with the syringe I managed to raise just in time. My head steps back and hits my forehead. My hand steps back and hits my forehead, causing the plunger to push out all the liquid at once. I barely notice him flinching as he shakes his hand until the syringe comes off. Yet I can start breathing again as his grip loosens. He swings his fist once again and this time manages to hit my face. But it doesn't hurt at all. His hand is completely limp and is incapable of no more than a pathetic harmless slap. Soon, his other hand follows suit, to the point he can no longer keep a grasp on me. I twist his fingers and free my neck. They feel like jelly in my hands. He tries to attack me, but he's lost all control of his arms. I crouch down and pick up the syringe he dropped. As I start stabbing him as hard as I can all over his body. His legs, his chest, his head, his limp arms. How does it feel, you bastard? I just keep on stabbing his limp body with an empty syringe over and over and over. It seems the anaesthetic got to his legs eventually because he can't stand up anymore. I try to stab him again, but I go right through his body. He melts. His time is up. I step back and watch his body melt. This time, he doesn't flail or struggle. He must be completely paralyzed. I guess not even you are immune to Lucian's drugs, huh? Presumably he's made by them. I throw the syringe to the floor and crush it underfoot. Soon after, I hear the clock beep. Good job with the first puzzle, Mr. Whoa, what happened here? I... I got dizzy for a moment and I think I, I fell off the chair. Are you okay, Mr. Alistair? Yeah, you can use my chair. I think I'll take over, alright? Sounds good to me. I'm tired. Yeah, no problem, Mr. Alistair. I'll handle the rest. So it's brown, then green, then blue. Yeah. From dominant to recessive, if I understood correctly. Makes sense? Okay. I'll be just a minute. <sighs> you have completed room three. Aw, oh, yeah. Alright, that should do it. How are you feeling, Miss Alistair? Better. I'm glad. Come on, let's get out of here. You... You got the password, right? Yes, Mr. Alistair. I've got it locked up safely in here. He points to his head. Did he seriously remember all those characters? Haha, <laughs> the look on your face. Yes, it sounds impossible, but... I guess you could say my memory is a bit better than the average. Alright then. I bit my ass. Who bit my ass? Arr. Shall we? 
You think we can open it with the three passwords? Well, we won't know until we try, right? Alright then. Let's just do it. Sam wipes the sweat off his brow. Okay. Here it goes. Sam steps forward, presses a button, and a keypad lights up. Without a second thought, he starts tapping keys with both hands. Did he really memorize that huge password? He presses the OK button, and a green light turns on. There are still three unlit lights to the left of it. Hmm. Did it work? I think so. I mean, something lit up. Huh, I guess you're right. On to the next one, then. With that, Sam starts typing again. That's right, he also has the password from room 3. Another green light turns on. This time it's the third from the left. Mr. Alistair? He steps to the side and points to the input panel. I take out my notepad and start typing in the long string of numbers and letters. We need one more. Yeah. Okay, that's all of them. Wait, I must have made a typo. But the light's on, is it? Yeah, but it's red. Red means it's wrong, right? I guess that must be the case. You must have made a typo. Do you want to try? You want me to try? Sure, knock yourself out. I hand him my notepad and let him type the password this time. Honestly, it's a pain to type that huge thing in, so I don't mind. He presses OK and the second light turns from red to green. This time a loud metallic sound follows the soft beep from the keypad. Alright, so all three passwords seem to be correct. So then... Was that sound... Sam twists the big metal handle of the door. And it slides open, emitting a metallic screech that echoes all around the room. But there were four rooms. Why are there only three puzzle uh, three passwords from four rooms? It seems it is, Mr. Alistair. He gives me an unnerving glare. What? I'm finally here. I just have to... I swallow and take a step into the vault. A foul smell wafts from inside, making me flinch and cover my nose. I try to feel my way around the darkness, and that's when... Sam enters behind me and flips the light switch. Before I can even get my bearings, I see something that makes my stomach flip. My eyes become a eyesight becomes a blur. Everything starts spinning around me. I think Sam is yelling, but I can't hear anything. He drops to his knees, completely devastated. You'd think I'd be crying, but right now I feel completely empty. I feel nothing. I hear nothing. I see nothing. Nothing. Except for the corpse of my best friend, covered in blood. God. God fucking damn it! Snap. I run toward him and throw myself to my knees next to him. I'd almost forgotten how it felt to cry. I just kneel there, staring at my best friend's dead, rotting body. I began examining the scene. Looks like he coughed up a lot of blood. Looking behind him, I finally noticed the cause of death. A stab wound on his back. Probably punctured a lung. In his hand rests a bloody scalpel. He must have pulled it out of himself. Since the stab wound is on his back, it's impossible he committed suicide. So then... Who killed him? I look behind me and sa at Sam. He's looking away, rubbing his eyes under his glasses. Why? Why does everyone I love... Everyone I care about... As I stand in front of his body, Sam approaches from behind. His steps are heavy and his breathing loud. What... What happened? To him. I try to compose myself as best I can. At first sight, this looks like a murder. But there's no way someone else entered this place before us, is there? Unless it was the faceless man. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe someone who... Who worked here? Hmm? No, I don't think he would have told the password to anyone, including his own employees. I get up from my knees and take a step back. Dr. Lucian Janus is dead. A very valuable life has been lost. A scientific prodigy. And my best friend.
Looking around, I see Lucian's lab coat hanging from a chair. Weird. Why would he take it off inside? I pick it up, a knot forming in my throat. Well, I guess that's it then. I'm going to call my boss. You stay here and make sure the vault doesn't lock itself up again, okay? And don't touch anything. This is a crime scene. Go ahead, Mr. Alistair. I'll be here. Alright. I'll be right back. I step out of the vault, still holding on to Lucian's coat. Two dead bodies in one night. I call Sally and deliver the bad news. Now I should make my way downstairs and check the vault. As soon as the cops get here, they'll secure the whole place. I'm sure Sally will make sure that I don't show up in any reports. Although, I don't even know what to tell her about Luna. I spend what seems like an eternity just sitting down staring into nothingness. Finally, I get up from the chair. That's when I notice something more and move in the lab coat's right pocket. I bury my hand into it and out comes some sort of vial. Why would it move? It's a small glass syringe filled with a clear pinkish liquid. Is this another one of those anesthetics Lucian put in the rooms? No, wait. This is for crystal clear. This is kind of pink. Upon closer inspection, I notice a small label stuck onto the vial. It reads... Tabula Rasa, 26%. Lucian Janus. My newest invention, Tabula Rasa, will set his life straight again. So, it actually exists. The vial of immortality. Who the hell would even want to use this? I can't believe he thought that this would solve all my problems. That couldn't be further from the truth. Living forever? What would that solve? I don't even think this works at all. Me being here tonight is enough proof that it doesn't. Time to go back downstairs. I shouldn't leave that kid alone for so long. I put the vial back in the pocket and bring the lab coat with me back downstairs. Upon arriving to the basement, I notice the vault's door is closed again. It better not be locked. I'm not going through this shit again. I approach the giant metal door and turn the handle. And it opens just like that. Whew. I step inside and close the door behind me. And that's when it hits me. What the? I suddenly feel nauseated and dizzy. My sight becomes distorted. I lose balance and fall, hitting my head on the counter on the way down. <coughs> God damn it. The, what the? <coughs> There's <coughs> something in the air. Is this chloroform? I try to open the door again, but any attempt to get on my feet still fails miserably. I can't seem to muster any strength to move. Sam, help me. <coughs> Sam? Could it be? Did... Could he have... Is... Is this it? Search inside pocket. <gasps> We're gonna tabula rasa ourselves. Tabula rasa. It's... It's now or never. Imagine if it just kills us even more painfully though. <laughs> Stir... Stir? I must be Sally. What? The hell just happened? Where am I? I'm alive? The last thing I remember is I injected that thing. And then, I think I passed out, and somehow, I'm back here now? Did, did it seriously? Ugh, my head hurts so bad I can't think straight. If it really did work, 
My newest inventor will set his life straight again. And he was thinking about me while making it. I don't... I don't understand. I mean, it's good that I'm alive, but what does this solve exactly? Mr. Alistair. Mr. Alistair, I must be Sam. Are you alright? You look really pale. Are you feeling sick? Mr. Alistair? Can you hear me? I'm calling an ambulance after we get out of this room. Don't... don't call anyone. I'm fine. Sam. Oh, you're back. Thank goodness. Wow, you look like you're not feeling that well. How about you sit down and let me finish this up so we can get out of here? Yeah, no. I know I was almost a goner, but really, I'm fine. You almost what? We went back in time. What are you talking about, Mr. Allison? What do you mean, what am I talking about? I almost asphyxiated just now. From chloroform. But you saved me just in time. And I'm really grateful for that. Even though it wasn't actually you who saved my life. But I guess it wasn't him who was responsible for the leak after all. Since he pulled me out of there. That's a relief. Chloroform? Here? No, not here, in the... What the... Where are we? One of the rooms? Why are we here? We already got the passwords. I... I don't understand. Why are we back here? And... Why is the clock ticking down? We already did this puzzle. We already got this password. There's something very wrong here. Did that injection mess up my brain? Did I actually take that injection in the first place? What the hell is going on here? That's... What I would like to know, Mr. Alistair. We were doing the puzzle to get password 3, but... You just suddenly... Spaced out. It was like you weren't there anymore. And then, well... You started freaking out. If there's really a chloroform leak, we'd better do something about that. And quick. No, I... Okay, Brendan. Get your shit together. There has to be a logical explanation for all of this. I'm sure I was in the vault just now. Then there was the chloroform. And I injected myself with tabula rasa. And I passed out. Then I woke up here. And... And it turns out we never even went to the vault in the first place? How does that even... No way. No fucking way. Tabula rasa? A clean slate. There's no way this can be real. So then... That means the chloroform... Uh, Mr. Alistair. I don't want to be that guy, but... We're kind of running out of time here? I think I'll go ahead and solve the puzzle myself. You should sit this one out. You're clearly not feeling well. No. False alarm, I'm fine. In fact, why don't you sit down while I get the password? Oh, please, Mr. Alistair. I couldn't let you do it. Trust me. Just go to that corner. Sit down and let me work. Uh, alright then. Just let me know if you need anything. There's no way I'm letting this kid get the password this time. Congratulations on completing the first half of this room. It seems you've gotten the hang of this things by now. The next puzzle is similar to the first. No, no. This time you will be presented with eight people. Four female and four male. You'll have to deduce the eye colour genotype of each of them. Okay. You will need to match each of the males with each of the females, which will show you the eye colour ratio of their offspring. Click any person, and when you click another of the opposite sex, the sex, the percentages on the bottom of the screen will change accordingly. Within each sex, the four people have been ordered by eye colour, from dominant at the top to recessive at the bottom. What this means is that you will never have a green-eyed person above a brown-eyed person or a blue-eyed person above any other colour. You'll also find some people that have more than one possible genotype. Any valid one will be accepted. Do note these eight people all have a different genotype. You are also given one a one-time hint that you can use once all the alleles have been inputted. Press the validate button on all of the and all the correct genotypes will be locked in, and all the incorrect ones will be coloured red. Do so make sure to complete all genotypes before clicking it, even if you have to guess. Good luck. So match the people together and figure out their genotypes from their children. It's kind of interesting. I'll give it a shot. Okay. 
So Maya plus Edward equals all blue, all brown. Maya plus Robert equals all brown. Maya plus John equals all brown. So she's like, so maybe big B on one side, big B on the other side, or big G on the other side, and then little, little. Okay, we got 50% again, so that's a big B already. 100%. So that's maybe a big G as well. With Daniel, she's got 0% brown. 0% brown. That means it has to be little B, little B. With 100% green though, that means it has to be big G's. Little G. This one just has said for lots of G's as well. Big G's for Daniel. Big G's for Daniel. <laughs> I'm guessing that's how it is. Mm. Alright, let's do Lily. Lily, we got 50. 25, 25. 100. 50. Zero. Zero? Oh man. Alright, all little B's again. So I'm guessing big G, big G. Oh, but we got zero green as well. But that makes them the same. She could be just fully recessive. They said that dominant on top, recessive on the bottom. You're gonna have to have a big B. One big B. The B's are the easy, the G's are the hard part for me. 25, 30, zero. So we can't have a zero, so I'm thinking it's like big G, little G. 100, 100, a hundred, a hundred, a Big B, big B, this one is irrelevant. Because the B's override everything, so there's no way to even work out these last two. It could be anything. Same as this one. I guess we could go like that, and then this one could be like... Big G, big G? Like that? That'll work, right? Alright, let's do John. Alright, John. 50, 50, 75, 100, big B. Yep, definitely. And then we're gonna have... Zero. So it's gonna be little g, little g. I reckon, for John. Alright, we just need to do Daniel then. And that's only the B's we need to work up for Daniel. Fifty, zero, zero. So these are both little bees. They have to. Should I validate this? Nah. Submit. Hey, <laughs> yeah. We have completed room three. That was a pretty fun puzzle. That was my favourite one so far. Done. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Let's get out of here already. I know I said immortality was way beyond the realm of possibility, but... This? Did... Did I seriously... Is this... My second chance? That's the question. Once again, Sam and I stand before the vault's entrance. He seems to be really anxious, just like last time. I can't really say the same about myself, though. I know exactly what's waiting for me behind that door. Yep. I better keep an eye on this kid. I can't have, leave him alone, not even for a second. Which means, I can't go upstairs this time. Not that I really need to. Everything I need is down here. I reach out and press the keypad, making it light up. I take out my notepad from my pocket. It seems to have travelled with me just like it was was before. I start typing passwords two and three. Sure enough, the second and third lights turn on. I need one more. Kid, tell me the other password. I'll just type it in myself. It's easier that way. He starts walking toward the keypad, but I grab him by the wrist. Give. Me. The password. I'm the only one who touches that keypad. Now. He stumbles as I let him go. He swallows and fixes his glasses all while avoiding meeting my sight. I hand him my notepad and pen. 
He hesitates for a moment before taking them and jotting down his password. That's right, he remembers them by heart. That's kind of freaky. Mean. Done. Good. I finished typing out the third password and hit the enter key. As expected, the third light turns on and I hear the sounds of the door unlocking. I hope this will be the last time I have to do this. Good, it's open. Okay kid, let me level with you. I don't think you want to go in there. Janice's body's in there. I'm not looking at him, but I can tell his whole world just fell apart. You don't know that? He... He might still be... He's fucking dead, Sam. My voice cracks. I clench my fist and grip my teeth. I feel a lump on my throat. He's dead. Janice is dead. I know for sure. He doesn't argue this time. I think in his heart he knew from the start. Oh, that rhymes. I'm going in. Take a deep breath, step inside and press the big light switch. And with that, we're going to wrap this one up here because we're out of time for today. Again, it might be a little bit short when I cut down the, uh, the puzzle, although I felt like I got through the puzzle reasonably quickly this time, so I might not have to trim too much. We'll see. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.